<laughs> see if I can do this one again. Hey, look at that. Right, this is right with better tattooing. Pretty happy with that. I don't usually draw things very well. <laughs> On this whiteboard bent over a freezer sideways. We're gonna talk about stretching and ask you, are you doing that right? All right. <laughs> All right, now that's over with, stretching. Now, this is something that is really fun because when I walk around shops or conventions and stuff nowadays, I see a lot of people not stretching at all. They just don't. And sometimes it's for good reason, but for other times it's just maybe a lack of experience that goes to tell you, uh, you know, these tattoos are probably not gonna heal out well. <laughs> stretching is an integral part of tattooing, right? We can think about our skin as almost like a guitar string, right? When left without any type of stretch, it's extremely malleable. We think about a needle coming into contact with it. From a machine, if there's no stretch, the skin is able to move away from it and adjust, right? We're actually using that needle to stretch the skin. And when it comes to a point where the skin has finally reached a maximum amount of tension with that strike coming down, then the needle can pass through. So when you have very, very small groupings, like a three round, the amount of resistance off of that is going to be less than, let's say, a 13 round shader, right? And what happens is, because the needle is more spread out, it's able to move the skin further away. So you have to, like, really adjust your throw. You see people yarding their stuff out when they've got, like, four mil throw and they're dragging lines and you can see the skin bouncing up and down and the line work looks like it's great. It's because that needle is having to push the skin all the way until it's actually stretched because they're not stretching with their hand and then it's punching through, which usually means that, that line is gonna be set really deep. It's getting oversaturated and there's a greater chance of it blowing out. <clears throat> We've had a lot of videos, a lot of people just don't like what we say about running our lines specifically. And that's fine because you're wrong and I'm not. Um, <laughs> stretching is really, really important. And this is something that you learn before you actually start learning about pressure and running your lines. The stretch is the most important 101 aspect of all tattoos. And what I tell everyone when you're first starting out, or even if you're an old boy, you stretch like you mean it, right? You should be white knuckling this stuff every day. You're, you're stretching, and like you've seen people who've tattooed, I've tattooed for a long time now, my fingers have twisted from the effort of stretching all the time. I mean, they have actually bent and twisted, and they become knurled. It almost looks like I have arthritis, but it's just from that constant force of days after days, weeks after weeks, years after years, of stretching the skin that my, my bones have started to curl. It doesn't even hurt, but it just is, you know, it's what happens. Something to look forward to if you tattoo for decades. <laughs> Stretching is the most overlooked thing in, in anyone's tattoo arsenal, right? With our toolbox that we create. The stretch is really important because it gives us an understanding of how much effort is required for the needle to go through. If we have anyone's skin, right? Let's say a forearm is relatively elastic as well, and we're stretching on it and we use a three round and we use that same amount of force and we grab a larger needle, a 23 whatever mag, right? And we try to do the same amount of motion, that amount of flex on the skin is gonna be increased and you're not gonna get the penetration required. So think about it. if I throw a javelin in the air, it comes down, it'll stink into the ground, no problem, right? <clears throat> if I throw a telepo telephone pole into the ground, same height and come down, it's gonna bounce. You're gonna have to go up much higher and get much more velocity and maybe even weight that thing to get it to actually penetrate penetrate into the ground at the same distance, depth, or even angle as that pointed object, because <clears throat> there's less surface area, right? If we have our skin and we have something thin going through it, it's easy for it to push through. We have something that's wider, that amount of surface area is gonna displace all that force, and it's gonna make it harder for it to go through. That's where we tune our skin. We tune it with stretching. It's like tuning a guitar string, right? The faster that that vibration is, the tighter that it is, the less resistance is gonna be required to create that. For us to have a very loose rope somewhere and we're trying to make sound off of it, you have to put a ton of energy into it to create that sound. It may not be something that you can even hear, but it's different. <clears throat> Skin acoustics is a fascinating thing. Uh, anyways, so 
how are you stretching right now? I, I've seen a lot of videos <clears throat> recently. They're talking about three point stretch, two point stretch. <clears throat> that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? Because we already have two points of stretch already naturally in the skin. Our skin is pulled over top of our skeletal and muscular structures, right? It's already stretched. That's why if you get a blunt force wound with something that's flat, sticks into your arm, the skin peels open. It's under tension already, right? And where it peels open, those lines along where it peels open is the tension lines. You can literally keep ripping the skin apart. I wouldn't say do that, it's disgusting, right? But it will keep tearing along those same lines because that's how it's stretched over the structure. We can utilize that when we're getting into actually doing our tattoos by understanding how it's stretched over. <clears throat> All you're gonna do is just pinch and stretch away and you're gonna find one way that stretches more than the other. That's it. And that's how you stretch. <laughs> If I stretch this way because it stretches further and I'm going to do my lines, it, it's already got the body's natural tensions going against it. That's why it can't stretch any further. It's already at almost a full movement, right? It's just got a little bit of extra elasticity to allow for range of motion. But the other side is the open. So now if we're using the body's natural tension lines and we're applying a stretch off of it, we have a four point stretch. Beat that. Two point, three point, don't matter, hit four. <laughs> You want to go really crazy with this, you can hit six. <laughs> it's elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, finger, and we're going to get uh, our plant hand and then tension lines. That's super duper fun. <laughs> so anyways, I think I might have made a video about that before. I don't know. Um, so why do I say stretch the heck out of it? Now this is, this is really important when you're first learning. If we're always beefcake in that stretch, yay Canada. If we're always beefcake in that stretch as hard as we can, when we go in to do any of our lines, we're gonna start understanding what the consequences of our depth is. So if we're running a three line through it, right, and we have a really hard stretch, you're probably gonna see points when you're first starting out that are gonna be broken, oversaturated, mildly blown out, leaky, whatever. And it's gonna teach you about depth, right? You can have a fixed point. You're not, your yardage on your needle coming out the tube tip is gonna be the same, so you, have, you don't have to adjust your throw. Your stretching is always constant. We're training our eyes to understand what a well-saturated line looks like. This is like 101, right? It's the first things that we do when we get into doing tattooing. <clears throat> when we're doing this, especially when the tattoos come back, you can see all of your flaws and you can start seeing how you're doing this stuff and you can start adjusting how your hand moves, your angle of how it goes in, everything else. But you have constant variables throughout. It's better to overstretch than to under in most cases because you can always adjust back your needle and your hand speed and everything else you're doing. Now this may not work for some people, like most people are gonna be limited in their groupings because they don't have the size or the strength to do this. If you're very slight in stature, you may not be able to get enough stretch to actually use like a 45 mag, which I see a lot of people doing that really, really incorrectly, which is horrible. Um, <clears throat> Okay, my battery died. Anyways, we'll get back out of here. I know, Ryan, charge your batteries. I did, I just, anyways, made a bunch of videos today. I forgot to swap it out. Um, so you have your slight in size and you don't have the strength to do this, the range of needles that you're gonna be able to use shrinks down, right? But you can train, you can train that. You can actually train your hand to get stronger. It's just like through exercise. If you're constantly doing your stretching every day the same way, the muscles that you have in there <clears throat> are going to be able to adapt and get stronger, which will increase the amount of groupings that you can use. Uh, your hand should be cramping after your first tattoos that you're doing. It's only through, you know, months and years of practice that you're going to build up that endurance to be able to continue that stretching throughout the day and maybe be able to work for 8, 10, 12 hours, right? It takes a lot of time. If you're not somebody who wants to work that much, still doing this is going to be good because it's going to make sure that you have consistency, at least in one of the variables that you're using. And once we learn about the stretching, we start seeing these things come back and maybe we start to be able to use more groupings. We're constantly training on those larger groupings as they move up, what the response is from the body and what's required to make them work correctly, right? It's not just about getting a picture for Instagram. This is the three, five year mark. By the three to five year mark, you should be using more complex groupings. You should be using more complex techniques and you should have all these basic rudiments figured out. Like if I'm going to use a three round liner, I need this much force to do it and it goes in. And you shouldn't be asking those questions. That should just be intuitive at that point in time. So stretching, just give it hell for the first bit, right? Just do it as much as possible. It will improve 
the outcomes of your tattoos. As the old boys used to say, it's, it's better to blow out than fade away. And in a lot of cases it is, because it's easier to fix that than try to repair a bunch of tattoos that look like they faded away because you didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> I mean, if your artwork's crap, just don't tattoo anyways, right? I mean, and that's just don't, not everyone needs to create artwork like custom to do tattoos. Tattoos, like just, if you're starting, you shouldn't be doing your own artwork. You're not that special. You should be doing other people's artwork that is already established and they have made a name for themselves with the tattoos they're doing because they, they last well. And they, you know, it doesn't even matter about style. It's like, I don't want to do old school. You don't have to do old school stuff. You just have to do tattoos that you can copy because you're not doing art. You're trying to learn the techniques. And I have been seeing people stretching improperly for so long, it makes my eyes crossed, right? Anyways, uh, part after this, which maybe I'll make a video after this because now I've got a fresh battery. Uh, stretching is going to lead into your needle depth understanding, right? And that's how you start adjusting your throw. Once you have both of those together, then you start using pressure. After you get into pressure, then you start getting into technique. So this is very A, B, C, D. But this is the first one. If you don't get stretching down first and you're just running lines, it's going to be wildly inconsistent. And make sure that your stretching as well is going to be adapted to the person. If you have a 93-year-old person coming to get the tattoo, when you're stretching, you're stretching to the limit of their skin. <laughs> I remember when I was learning, I had this really, really old person come in, and I bared down with my stretch, and I literally ripped their skin. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> it was good, because I was just training for that, right? And I was like, oh, okay, I'll just lighten this up. And, but I had already had a bunch of other training with all the other things I just mentioned so that I could adjust and adapt. We always start bear down, give a line, see how the skin responds, and then go from there. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. We'll be making more videos today, so we have a whole bunch scheduled because I have a busy couple months coming up. So um, if I don't answer back, I apologize. I'm, I'm doing my best. I've got road trips and teaching and writing and a whole bunch of other stuff going on. So that's it. Anyways, thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon.